There's a cruel monster in the business world, reaching out from the depths of the underground, dragging you down, holding you back from everything that you want. That monster is shiny object syndrome. So you can leave this video right now and go get distracted with something else, another shiny object, or you can stick around and you can actually figure out why is this happening over and over again to all of us and what can you actually do about it? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So right here, I've got eight ways that I finally beat shiny object syndrome. Now, I still fall victim to it. I still fall prey to shiny object syndrome, just like the rest of us, but I have actually overcome it enough to hit my initial goals in business to get real momentum and build something that has lasting power and get out of that cycle of just starting things over and over again, avoiding that pain, going into something, and then as soon as it gets hard or uninteresting or dull or boring, leaving for something that looks way cooler. Now, there's something that you need to understand here, and it's that our brains are basically computers that are programmed from environmental inputs, okay? The hardware of our brains is biological, it's inherited, but then the software that's running on the hardware is largely based on environmental inputs. And if you are in the United States right now or even anywhere in the world, most of us are kind of brought up culturally around certain universal paradigms and principles. So the education system teaches us a certain way, it rewards us a certain way, and it's this deeply embedded software in our brains that causes us to behave in certain ways and seek certain results. And understanding this can really be used to our advantage and a lack of understanding is gonna cause you to keep behaving in ways that aren't in your best interest overall. So one thing you have to understand about the software in your brain is that humans are always gonna do what's easiest in the moment. It's our natural instinct is to not to exert more energy than we have to. Our biological imperative is to stay alive. And we're gonna exert as little energy as we have to to stay alive. And so your brain, you probably hear this all the time, doesn't give a shit about your goals. It, it cares about doing what's easiest in the moment and conserving energy and staying safe. And so we have to understand that so we can put things in place to kind of override the biological impulse. So how I finally beat shiny object syndrome, number one is have a tangible goal. Now, we gotta think about this for a second. So if we're talking about business, and we're talking about getting monetary results, or we're talking about uh, making an impact, or helping somebody with a certain kind of problem, those are very abstract things that we wanna go after. So we may have a very strong vision of that in our mind, of what we want, but it's still so abstract. We need to turn that goal into a tangible goal. Now think about this. What do we get in school? All of us growing up, we get a report card in school, we get that piece of paper, and we get a diploma. So already we've been programmed and conditioned to want that tangible thing at the end. We want that piece of paper that says, I did it. Now in the real world, it doesn't really work like that. But we can use substitutes. Think about this in sports again. Like if you think about becoming the best athlete and winning the race, or the, the big game or the national championship or whatever it is, like that's really cool, but it's still really intangible. Now think about that vision that you can have in your mind of winning. What do you usually get? Like the Super Bowl, I think you get a Super Bowl ring, right? And in the Olympics, you get a gold medal. So there's that tangible aspect of the goal that you're after. It's a byproduct of getting the result, but it allows your mind to focus in and go after that thing you really want. So let me show you something. I just got back from uh, being in Asia for about six months, but this came I think in March or in April. And so I haven't actually seen it yet. So let's see if you can see this. So we've got Christian Martin, digitalnomad.com 2018, two comma club award. So it's just like in the record industry, when you get that gold record, I had this goal in my mind that I wanted to hit a million dollars in one year with one funnel. And again, that's pretty specific, but it's not that tangible. And so when I was able to put that gold record in place and say, I want this gold record and I want it on my wall right here and picture that every single day. So I walk down the stairs of my house and every single day, I picture that gold record right there on the wall. And I was finally able to walk in my house, put that up and see the completion of that vision that I've had for so long. So I turned that thing that's kind of intangible into a tangible goal. That's number one on how to 
finally beat shiny object syndrome. Number two, I have be willing to suck. One of the biggest reasons that people don't make it through shiny object syndrome is they start a new project, they start a new venture, a new business, and it's really fun at first because they're learning a lot and there's kind of like beginner gains. Like if you, if you start going to the gym for the first time, uh, you're gonna get beginner gains, so like really fast progress, and then you're gonna level out and plateau. So the same thing happens in business, is you get beginner gains, and then as soon as you have to break through that plateau, you realize that you're not actually that good at what you're doing, and most people can't tolerate not being good at things, and so they're just gonna walk away from that and try and find something that's easier. Now that is a huge mistake, and so to beat this, to stay in the game, I have this mug, and it says, create something today, even if it sucks. And I actually have a couple of these mugs, and so every morning when I'm drinking my coffee and I'm looking over my goals, I, I'm reading this while I'm drinking coffee, create something today even if it sucks. And what does that do? That puts me focused on the process and not the outcome. So my focus is on creation and producing things because how you actually get the results you want in life, whether that's money or fulfillment or whatever, is to create and produce things for other people. And money is just gonna be a byproduct of that creation. So if you're not creating things for other people every day, you're not gonna get where you wanna go. And so that put my focus back on creation rather than outcome. Because we can't always control the outcome, okay? We're not gonna win at everything that we do. And in the beginning especially, the things that we produce are not gonna be that useful to other people. But the only way to get better at producing useful things for other people is to show up and create every single day. So the point is, even if you suck in the beginning, which you absolutely will, keep doing it. Uh, when I was in yoga teacher training, my teacher said, you gotta show up and suck in order to show up and be good someday. So number two, be willing to suck. Number three, I have short-term losses for long-term gains. Oh my God, this is such a fucking problem in the industry, is that people come in and they look at education or they look at a program, a training program or a business, and they wanna make an ROI on that investment in like two days, which is absolutely ridiculous. One of my real estate investor friends is in town right now and he was talking about doing renovations on one of his rental properties. And he was talking about a $10,000 renovation that would pay itself back in two years. And he mentioned it like that was the quickest ROI out of anything that he could do in his business. He's like, so two years and I'm gonna be break even on that. Can you imagine if people thought like that in the internet marketing industry? If they made investments and they got an ROI in two years, they would, everybody would be so much better off. We wouldn't have shiny object syndrome because people come in and they want an ROI on their investments in two weeks without actually doing anything. When you get new training or new skill sets or things like that, you have to use them long enough for them to pay off. And so first you have to go through and learn the material and you have to practice it, then you have to implement it, then you have to realize where you're still not good at it, and then you have to go implement it again over and over again. So it's all about reps, as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, it's all about the reps. And so when you're looking at getting an ROI on something, you need to lengthen your horizons. You need to be willing to take short-term losses for long-term gains, okay? We need to be in the habit of making investments in ourselves Knowing that over the long term, that's gonna produce an exponentially better result than somebody who doesn't make investments in themselves ever because they're not willing to take any short-term losses. Who gives a shit about short-term losses, okay? You have to play the long game and you're not gonna get there without taking any losses. So your goal is to level yourself up and increase your earning potential. It's not to be a millionaire on day one, okay? It's just not gonna happen. You wanna look 10 years out and say, how do I hit these goals? And it's gonna require short-term losses to get there. Just like investing in a new business, just like when you buy a house and you're down money at first and then over the long term you pay off your mortgage and now you have a cash flowing asset that you actually own. It's the same with your skill set. You're gonna go in the hole to get started and then that's gonna have an ROI over time. So be willing to take short term losses for those long term gains. Number four, I have listened to the market. So shiny object syndrome. As soon as projects would get hard, as soon as a niche would get hard, or I'd have a couple bad clients in a certain industry, um, I would want to jump ship and I would want to try different things. Or if I launched a new product or service and it's what I thought that the market wanted and it wasn't really hitting, I would kind of think like, okay, maybe I should like go do something else. When in reality, all I had to do is listen to the market. They were telling me exactly what to do. So for example, like my current webinar funnel, I had like three or four different iterations of this funnel that I got that two comma club award for that were kind of like directed at a different client avatar and they had a different name 
And so I had to actually shift and rework that over the course of like a year and rebrand each time to find the one that actually finally hit. So just like Russell Brunson says, you're one funnel away. You are, it's gonna take you a couple funnels to get there, no matter what industry you're in. So you're not gonna hit it first try, but if you listen to the market, they'll tell you what to sell them. So this is why I always laugh too when people are hating on marketers, because it's like, eventually, everybody who's in business is just offering what the market actually responds to. So we're not gonna put marketing out there that nobody wants to see. We just put marketing out there that gets the best response. We look at data, we see what hits, we see what doesn't, and we do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. And so as a marketer, you're basically just parroting back to the market what they tell you that they want. So if you look at somebody's marketing and you hate it or it makes you angry and you wish, why can't they just be more straightforward or why don't they tell so many stories or uh, why are they so hypey or anything like that? It's because the market's telling them that's what they're responding to. But if you're out there and you're trying to beat shiny object syndrome, instead of switching opportunities completely, try just tweaking what you're doing based on what the marketing is telling you. Number five, recruit support and encouragement. I have support and encouragement as two things here. So number one, support. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever niche you're in, whatever industry you're in, honestly, join a program that teaches people how to do exactly that. It blows my mind that people don't want to spend money on education when any training program you join is like having a thousand people that have already gone through the process tell you exactly what to watch out for and what has worked and what hasn't. And so people are like, I'm going to go out there and do it on my own with free YouTube videos. Those people are never successful. They never make it. Everyone I know who is successful goes and they join training programs because it's leveraging the power of everyone who's been through that program before you. You're getting so many more data points than if you go out and you do something on your own. It's gonna take you 10 years to make as many mistakes as those thousand people who are already in the training program have had. And when you hit a wall and you hit an obstacle, instead of suffering in silence, you can go to your training program and say, hey, who's had this problem before? And somebody's gonna be able to help you solve it. So it's gonna be direct tactical support and strategic support in the goal that you're trying to accomplish. You have something very specific to that. Now you also need encouragement, okay? And that's because we are social animals. We respond to social cues and we're gonna do what makes us fit in with a group. And so if our group is saying starting a business is dumb, eventually we're gonna give in to those social cues and we're gonna say, I'm not gonna start a business because it doesn't feel safe. Now if we surround ourselves with people who think building a big business is awesome, then we're gonna to wanna to live up to that expectation. It's gonna raise our status to succeed in business and we're gonna feel really good and connected when we actually hit our goals. So I have a group called Funnel Homies and we are all in this goal together to get a two comma cup award. And so I couldn't have done it without Funnel Homies because I knew they thought it was cool. I knew they'd be super stoked when I actually got a two comma cup award and they offered me a lot of encouragement along the way. Whereas my friends who aren't in business, you know, they don't really care about that stuff. So you need to have support and encouragement. Number six, how I finally beat shiny object syndrome. I have put yourself in work jail. Now I've talked about this before. I used to go into an industry or business and I would have moderate success. I would get those beginner gains. And then like six months later, 12 months later, 18 months later, those kind of my three milestones, I would jump ship and I would go do something else. So I'd have some moderate success at first. And then I would get bored, quote unquote bored, because my mind would tell me I'm bored. Uh, and then I would go do something else entirely. Now, I got so sick of that, doing that for so many years, and not hitting my goals, not getting to the million dollar mark that I really wanted to get to, that I said, you're in this for two years, there's no jumping ship, you're not allowed to leave this business model. You can tweak your marketing angle, but you're not allowed to leave this business model for two years, no matter what. And so I wanted to leave so many times, I would get frustrated, something would go wrong, I've had a bad week or a bad month, and I would wanna leave, but I put myself in work jail for two years where there was no getting out. So it was a non-issue in my mind. There was no discussion happening. There wasn't, oh, maybe I'll leave this industry in a niche and maybe I won't. It was, no, you're in for two years. Too bad, suck it up. And so that got me to stay in because the longer you stay in something, the closer you are to mastery and mastery doing something extremely well. Covering the fundamentals extremely well is how you're actually going to get the results that you want in life. It's not by finding the perfect opportunity, just by getting really, really good at the opportunity that you've chosen to stick with. So number six, put yourself in work jail. Tell yourself, I'm in this for two years, full time. There's no getting out, no matter what. At the end of two years, I can evaluate and make a different decision if I still am really unhappy. 
But that's going to help you fight through those hard times and get what you want to go. Seven, money is just a number. And this is a two-sided thing. It's like, number one is we make such a big deal out of it. And it seems like an impossibility to make more money and things like that. It's just a number. So if like, if you can make $1,000, there's no reason you can't make $10,000. There's no reason you can't make a hundred or a million dollars. It's just a number. You're just doing the thing over and over again. So take the emotions out of the money. Um, stop tying it to your ego. Like, are you the kind of person that can do this or not? It's just a number and a bank account. The other thing is, if you're only chasing money, after you hit your goals, you're gonna feel the same way. You're gonna feel like, oh, I could keep doing this, but it's just a number on the computer screen. It keeps going up. It doesn't have any real meaning. So you wanna make sure that you are doing something that you believe in. And the number one thing is that you care about your clients and the result that you provide for them. Because that's where your fulfillment is actually gonna come over the long term. And when you're questioning yourself, like, why am I still doing this? It's just a number. I already got the initial number that I wanted. Um, staying in it for your clients is going to make all the difference. So I've been thinking about this a lot and a lot of people have a saying like you should find your passion, you need to find out what you're passionate about so that you stick with something over the long term you get good at it. I don't think you need to find what you're passionate about, I think you need to find who you're passionate about. Like who do you want to be hero to and then go into that market and then just fall in love with your customer and continue to provide solutions for them. So if you focus on who you're passionate about instead of that number, um, that's going to make it a lot easier to stay in the game and get results. If you've noticed, there's a theme here. Staying in the game is the number one thing to fight shiny object in them. Number eight, the last one I have here, is have the next goal ready to go. So I hit that gold record, like I said, I think it was back in March or April. And this had been a goal that I had in my mind so intensely for so long. And I wanted it so bad, and it was driving me forward every single day. And it caused me to produce quite a lot, try a lot of different things, put in a lot of work, have a real sense of urgency because I wanted to get this thing. And as soon as I got it, a lot of the pressure that had built up was taken out of my business. And so it's like, okay, I hit my goal, now what? It was kind of like, okay, I already did that. And there's much less pressure. And I felt really burnt out. Like um, I just didn't have the stamina that I used to have. I wasn't being as productive. There wasn't as much pressure. I wasn't being pulled upwards. It's like, I already hit the goal. You know, what's even the point now? So. You really have to have the next goal ready to go or you're going to feel really deflated after you hit your initial goal. Whether that's to have your first thousand dollar month or ten thousand dollar month or a hundred thousand dollar month, whatever it is, hold that goal really strongly and intensely in your mind. Have a tangible reward for it, like a, a trophy or a trip or whatever it is. Maybe you take a trip with your friends when you hit your first ten thousand dollar month. Um, but after you hit that goal, celebrate it and then you have to reset that goal immediately after you're done celebrating. And that's gonna put the pressure back in. So after I realized that I had no more motivation after hitting this gold record, uh, I set a bunch of new goals around influencing the clients, how many clients we impact, how we impact those clients, and then also the size of the company. So we're trying to 10X that gold record now and get the, the uh, silver. So I think my camera's memory card filled up there, but we were just wrapping up. Have the next goal ready to go to rebuild that pressure in your business. Now, to finally beat shiny object syndrome, you're eventually going to have to just embrace the pain. Because the reason that we have it is because things get hard, they get painful in one way or another, emotionally, financially, whatever it is. And so we leave that opportunity and we go to something else. And we never break through that pain threshold. And it's like, imagine working out and you never push things to the point where they're painful. You're never gonna break through those plateaus and that's exactly what happens in business with shiny object syndrome. And so eventually when things come in your business and they're painful, say that things break down, your ad account gets shut down, a client's a pain in the ass, instead of that being a reason to walk away, lean into that pain, embrace it, and try to love that pain, and ask yourself, what is this teaching me? What is this showing me? There's a great book on this, it's called The Obstacle is the Way, and the things where that break down in our business are really just showing us the path forward, the path to success. Because those are our weak spots. That's where we need to improve to get to the next level. So how I finally beat shiny object syndrome and got my two comma club award for doing over a million dollars a year in sales in one funnel, have a tangible goal, be willing to suck, short-term losses for long-term gains. Please think long-term. Don't be afraid of short-term losses. Listen to the market. So let the market tell you what to sell. Recruit support and encouragement. Put yourself in work jail. You're in it for two years no matter what. No leaving. 
Money is just a number, both sides of that. Um, don't be intimidated by it. And also don't think that it's the end all be all in life because it's not. As soon as you have about $70,000 in income, uh, beyond that, your life satisfaction is not gonna go up exponentially. Before that, you're so worried about survival that uh, once you hit that point, you're gonna get a lot happier from having that much money, I'll be honest. And then eight, have the next goal ready to go. So go out there, put these into practice, let me know your experience with shiny object syndrome in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.